you. I was 28 years old, but I was still a child, hanging out in grad school, still having my parents pay for my car insurance and hitting the weekly bar specials. Sure, I had my part-time job at Lady Foot Locker, but I didn't have a washer or dryer, so I was using my employee discount and any money I made to buy clean clothes. <laughs> I knew I needed to make a change, and my friend Bonnie suggested that I apply for an opening in her medical supply company. I saw this as an opportunity to make my debut in the professional world and have something positive to talk about at my upcoming high school reunion. So I moved back to my hometown, and this is how I began my new career, selling adult diapers. <laughs> now, selling adult diapers is not as crappy as it sounds. They set me up with a laptop, a flip phone, and a company car. I was on the job for only two weeks when Bonnie asked if I would be willing to drive to Maryland and take her place in a meeting with some coworkers from across the company and some important clients. Uh, sleep in a hotel, Cinemax room service, yeah, I was willing. My only hesitation was I was so new to the company. Was I really qualified to represent our district? Bonnie assured me that all I had to do was show up. I just had to be there. In fact, the last thing she said to me before I left was, it is impossible for you to screw this up. <laughs> I got down there just fine, but I got a little carried away watching late night TV, which made it difficult to get up on time in the morning to meet my coworkers in the lobby at 8 a.m. I came strolling out of the hotel restaurant at 8.05, which to me was the same as 8. I saw them right away, my colleagues, the diaper executives. They had good haircuts and expensive shoes. And when I saw them looking at their watches and sizing me up in the suit I had borrowed from my mom and my big hair, I knew that they weren't going to see me as the adorable rookie as I had hoped. One of them said, you have the car, right? And that's when I found out that I was responsible for driving all of us to our meeting at a local nursing home. I knew they already hated me for being late once, so there was no way I was telling them I still had to go up to the seventh floor and get my suitcase and the car keys. But I was slick, and I said, why don't you guys wait out front, and I'll go down to the parking garage and get the car and just swing around and pick you up. Luckily, they agreed. The second they were out of sight, I raced up to my room as fast as I could, grabbed my bags, and made my way down to the parking garage. But the elevators were taking forever, and it felt like it was, it was just so long. I finally found the car, but then I had to spend a few more minutes cleaning up all my Roy Rogers trash and CDs I had left all over the front seat. Finally, I was on my way. As I pulled out of the parking garage, I saw a little sign out of the corner of my eye, and it said, to lobby. And the arrow on the sign was pointing in the opposite direction from the way I was driving. No big deal, I thought, I'll just going around the building. But the way I was driving should have had a sign that said, this direction will take you further and further from the hotel lobby and the three diaper executives who have now been waiting for you for 15 minutes. It shot me out into a traffic circle, and I was immediately caught up in the vortex of swirling cars. I was forced, I couldn't merge, I was forced to exit off to the right, down a one-way street, and I'm looking in the rearview mirror, trying to keep one eye in the hotel. I see my diaper executives out front, and they're getting smaller and smaller in the reflection. <laughs> I keep making right turns trying to get back to the hotel, but the streets are all weird. And before I know what's happening, I'm driving north on I-95. <laughs> and the first sign that I see says, next exit, nine miles. <laughs> I immediately became soaked with sweat. I wanted to throw up. Explosive diarrhea was a real possibility. And I know you're thinking I had adult diapers in the car, but we didn't wear them, except, except on weekends. The only decision I could come to, the only thing that made sense, was to keep on driving to Philadelphia. I would get home, 
put on some sweatpants, get some lunch, and start putting my resume out on monster.com. But after a few minutes, I remembered that I was driving a company car. They would probably want it back. So as I approached that first exit, my panic turned to determination. I got off the exit, I turned around, and I started heading back to the hotel. And I started doing SAT questions. If I go 80 miles an hour, how quickly can I get back there? If I go 90, how fast can I do it? And I started thinking, what story, what type of lie can I come up with that's going to excuse the fact that I've been gone for so long? And I just thought, when they start screaming at me, I'll just cry, hand over the keys to my new life, and call my mom and dad to pick me up. I drove faster and faster, and I got back there. And there they were, still waiting for me out front. I braced for impact as they got in the car. They had angry lines for lips. There was a lot of loud sighing and slamming of doors. There was a very uncomfortable silence as they seemed to be waiting for an explanation. But the only thing that came out of my mouth was, hey. <laughs> they were passive aggressive the rest of the day. And I don't know if they didn't know how to bring it up or if they were confused by the fact that I acted like nothing was wrong. But no one ever asked me why it had taken 37 minutes to bring the car around from the back of the hotel. Shortly after, I got a haircut, learned to tell time, and went on to win Sales Associate of the Year. <laughs> Carrying with me what I learned that morning. If you're wearing your mother's clothes or making your bosses ridiculously late for a meeting, if you do it with confidence, sometimes you can get away with it. Thank you.